All right, everybody, so much of this movie is utterly shit, but that does not mean it's not amazing. Okay, today we're taking a look back at a TV movie from 1978. Devil Dog, Hound from Hell. But before we go any further, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. different about him. I think you're imagining things. Oh, it's the dog. It's the dog. The dog next door that forced him to kill all those people. Send your demon. You know, I think you're crazy. You have this special strength to resist. The beast. Send your demon, your son. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Curtis Harrington. He did a few movies, maybe nothing that's going to jump out at you, but he did a few movies. He did stuff like uh, Voyage to the Prehistoric Planet, and Night Tide, and Queen of Blood, and tons of TV work like, you know, Vegas, and Wonder Woman, and uh, Charlie's Angels, and Hotel, and uh, Dynasty, and the, and, and, and the Colbys, and Beretta. So, big career in TV early career and low-budget shit flicks that I happen to love. So he was out there, he was doing his thing, and he was on the scene. Let's get to the cast. Okay, playing Mike Barry was Richard Crenna. We've had him on here a couple times already, and he's on here again. So let's go down the list of stuff and get right on through this. Of course, he was in the original First Blood. He was in Rambo 2. He was in Rambo 3. He was in Body Heat and Death Ship, which I reviewed, and The Flamingo Kid, The Sand Pebbles, Made in Paris, Wait Until Dark, The Devil's Backbone. So, Richard Corona, legendary career. I've covered him a couple times already. What more needs to be said? Okay, playing uh, Betty Berry was Yvette Mimir. Well, I think I'm saying that right. I've always had a hard time with her name, but Yvette, maybe, ah, fuck it, who cares? Anyway, she was in a lot of stuff starting way back in the day. I mean, I'm talking about she was in stuff like uh, Jackson County Jail and Skyjack, uh, The Delta Factor, uh, The Time Machine, uh, lots of TV work. And her, her two probably most prominent things that's going to jump at you is going to be she was in The Black Hole which was really awesome. And she was in Where the Boys Are way back in the day, which was like a big hit and like a teen thing. So, made her mark on the movie business is what it is. Playing Bonnie Barry, a lot of berries in this movie, people, is Kim Richards. Now, Kim Richards was a child star back in the 70s, man. You've seen her, you've seen her in a bunch of shit. You know she was in the magical world of Disney. She was in stuff like uh, Escape to Witch Mountain. Return from Witch Mountain. She was in TV shit like James at 16 and Different Strokes and Chips and The Love Boat. A bunch of after school specials. She was in uh, that movie not too long ago, Black Snake Moan. She popped up in that remake of uh, uh, Return to Witch Mountain with The Rock. And you know, kind of reprising the role, but whatever. And she popped up in the thing that will always be legendary to me. She was the kid that got iced at the ice cream truck in Assault on Precinct 13. And that will make you legendary in my fucking book any day of the week. Okay, playing Charlie Barry, the last of the Barrys, thank God, was Ike Eisenman. Now, he had a career that really ran in tandem 
with Kim Richards. But we'll get to that later. Anyway, he was in all those after-school specials, too. He was in the magical world of Disney back in the day. He was in Escape to Witch Mountain and Return from Witch Mountain. And he popped in that remake with The Rock. And he was on TV in Wonder Woman, TJ Hooker, and Chips. You know, Eight is Enough, and Police Woman, and SWAT. And of course, he's always going to be that young ensign who died. Who died in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. He stayed at the posts when all the other trainees ran. That kid. Yes, that's him. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, playing George the Neighbor was Lou Frizzle. Now, not a big name. Fuck, man, this guy was on a lot of TV shows, and you recognized his name, plain and simple. I mean, he was on stuff like uh, Barbie Jones and Lou Grant and uh, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, and Police Story, and The Streets of San Francisco, and Hawaii Five-O, and Harry O, and Cannon, and uh, Marcus Welby, and the Waltons, if you could stay awake to that fucking thing. So... He popped up in a million places back in the day. He was on a lot of TV shows. He was just like one of those faces. You've seen him, you knew him. He was a regular, just the way it went. Game playing Miles was Ken Kirchival. Now, there's something he was the most known for in his career, but he did other things too. We're talking about, he was in stuff like uh, Diagnosis Murder, L.A. War, and uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, and uh, uh, Susky and Hutch, and Kojak, and Murder, She Wrote, and... Uh, hotel, and uh, he'll always be basically known mostly because he, he had a, he had a fairly recurring good role going on Dallas for years. So he was out there, was doing his thing, bam. And also, before I go any further, even though he, oh, I only had a little teeny role in this, was R. G. Armstrong popped up in this, and who the hell can't love that? Who the hell can't love that? Okay, everybody, I'm going to give you the story in 90 seconds or less to the best of my ability. It's just the way it goes. Beginning of this motion picture, there's a bunch of Satan worshippers. And what are they looking for? A female dog. They find themselves a female dog. Really pretty German Shepherd, by the way, just throwing that out there. Anyway, they take this dog and they take it to one of their little Satanic rituals. And they get this dog knocked up by some other demon dog from hell. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's a demon. It shows up and it, it has sex with the dog. Don't fucking ask me. I didn't write this shit. Anyway, it gets the dog pregnant, and the dog has ten puppies. And these guys go out there to distribute the dogs to American families so that those dogs can possess the families and raise hell across the goddamn landscape of middle suburbia. Well, it just so happens that they quaintly run over the dog of Richard Trenner and the Barry family, and then they show up the very next day giving away puppies out the back of a fruit truck, R.G. Armstrong. Well, before you know it, they take in the dog, the dog possesses the kids, the kids turn into little fuckers, the wife turns into a sex-crazed maniac, they all start screwing with everybody, the neighbors start dying, the dog takes over the whole household, and Richard Crenna has to stop it. Oh. He goes out there and he looks for help. Oh, he goes and talks to a shaman. Oh, he battles it out with the devil dog itself. Anyway, that's the story. As convoluted as it is, take it for what it is. Okay, folks, let me give you the summary of what makes this movie classic. Now, is it the incredible acting? Shit, no. A lot of it is really heavy-handed, and some of it is wooden as all hell. Listen, Richard Crenna always turns in a great performance. That's just the way that dude is. But, hey, he only had the lines to work with with the lines he worked with. Yvette Mimu does a good, solid job. Can't knock her. The kids, well, is what it is. They did the best they could. It's not about the great acting. I wouldn't say this thing was directed like a masterpiece either. I'm not saying the writing was great. I'm not saying the special effects were good, because actually they were fucking god awful. If you watch, when you watch this movie, you're gonna say, "Oh my god, this is like the epitome of bad, bad, bad special effects." But if you can make it past the first 25 minutes of this motion picture, and believe me, the first 25 minutes of this motion picture are fucking laughable. It's so corny and stupid and goofy and just watch the shit going down with the puppy and the maid. I mean, what more needs to be said, you'll know it when you see it. But when you make it to the point when it turns into the 
grown-up German Shepherd devil dog hound from hell. And he's trying to do things like make Richard Crenna put his hand into the lawnmower and disfigure himself. From there on, this movie hits a stride and this movie starts rolling. Again, this isn't a masterpiece, but it's a fucking TV movie made in 1978 for CBS. And it was actually kind of dark, a little disturbing. I mean, you got Satan worshippers, you got the wife going crazy and screwing people, you got the kids harming other students. It was a dark, dark, dark little movie for a TV movie of its time. Again, the story's kind of goofy. Again, the acting is what it is. The directing is what it was. The soundtrack, yeah, it doesn't matter. It was a classic little low-budget cheese ball horror movie about a dog taking over a family and possessing them and turning them against the, the father. And it was just, ah! Oh. This is one of those motion pictures you have to appreciate in the context of the time. You have to appreciate what they were trying to accomplish because basically anybody could have made this movie with a bunch of friends, a dog, one house, and a cell phone. I'm telling you, there is nothing more needed. You could make this movie today, your friends could make it tomorrow, it doesn't make a difference. This is literally a movie that had, I would, I am sure, is no budget other than its couple stars paycheck. Literally. Because there's nothing here. But that doesn't mean it's not entertaining. I'm going to leave a link down below, because it's on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. And I found like the best copy of it I could find. I'm going to put it in the link below so that you guys can check it out. Watch the movie. Let me know what you think. This is going back to the golden age of fun little TV movies. This is back in the days of Duel and Salem's Lot and some of that other great, 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 great shit from long, 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 long ago that they don't really do anymore and they would never have this kind of fun with like they back in the day. You gargoyles, all those other fun TV. Ah, fuck, I'm going to get on a rant and go sideways. It doesn't make a difference. Anyway, everybody, go out. Click the link. Watch Devil Dog Hound from Hell. You know, with that devil dog, not the ones that look like that. And you will have yourself a fairly entertaining time. Just get to the first 25 minutes, stick with it, hold tight, and you'll have some fun. As always, everybody, thank you for checking in. Thanks for watching the video. Be good, stay out of trouble, take care of your fellow man, and as always and above all else, under no circumstances, for no fucking reason ever, take any bullshit from anybody. Peace, y'all.